This is Optitex PDS. With this software, I'm able to import any format of a CAD file, so whether it comes from a Gerber software or any standard format, including Adobe Illustrator, I can import in those patterns. Once I've imported the patterns, I have a set of tools here in my toolbox on the left to assist me in editing the patterns, checking the patterns, and even making them into an intelligent pattern. So to begin with, I can zoom in and out easily on the pattern and of course arrange the pieces as necessary. Within the 2D world, I also like to make this, the file an intelligent file. So when I looked at the regular specification that Ergodyne uses, I'm able to mimic this exact list of measurements so that I can see the, ex the same result here in 2D. To do that, I work with the measurement chart you see down here at the bottom. I've already begun to do it by creating my chest width, which is your A measurement. Now I'm going to create my bottom width. I simply need to define this one time, and then once that's completed, any edits I make to the pattern, I do not need to remeasure. So let's define the bottom width of this vest. So I'm going to define the bottom width to be from here to here, plus here to here, and since this is half a pattern, I'll multiply that by 2. And then I can continue down to create all the different specs. So here's my center back length, and again, I'll zoom in and measure my center back length. I can also define how that measurement is to be taken, so that it can be very specific with each pattern or measurement. So here you see I've taken some key measurements, well I've begun to take some key measurements around on my pattern. In addition, this pattern can be graded to represent all the different sizes. In doing so, I can assemble this pattern in 3D and see the different sizes on different models within the 3D window. Another note to point out is that often when you want to see a vest with different lengths or different styles, I can go in with some simple movement tools, whether or not I'm a pattern maker, and let's say, for example, I'd like to lengthen this vest. I can come in and lengthen it by two inches and immediately see how that looks like within my 3D environment without having to cut a sample. Let's go ahead and undo that move. And when I undo it here in the 2D, it undoes it also in the 3D. Another interesting thing to note is notice how we have our reflective tape, which re are represented by these pieces here. I can go in and supply them with the material called the tape. In addition to that, I can color code my references so that I can very easily see by material which is which. So let's make the tape yellow. The system is also calculating the style and area report of each piece. In doing so, it can help you comply with government standards as to how much reflection tape needs to be in a certain design. So at any time, I can come up and select Piece, General, Style, Area, and Perimeter Report. What's nice about this report is that I can filter it based on the different material. So perhaps I want to see the Style, Area, and Perimeter Report of just the tape, and here it supplies me with the total amount. Or I could ask to see it for all materials, and it will give me the area report for all materials. This information can be exported into an Excel report, or a very simple text report, or it can be printed. In addition, the lines I use to stitch this in 3D all have a certain measurement length. So if you need to know the length of each type of stitch, you can click on the Stitches window and it will give you that information as well. Next, I have the opportunity to see what this is going to look like in 3D. 
So first, let's just ignore the tape pieces. I'm going to go into my 3D window and ignore those pieces. They are then removed from the 3D window. To assemble these pieces, I selected each piece and simply had to select its location in the 3D window, such as a sleeve, a back, a front, or a side. Next, I can choose, and most importantly, the type of material that it's made out of. So the vest material will have a different physical property, perhaps be a little drapier than the tape property material. So in doing such, I would choose two different types of material, one for the vest and one for the tape. This will also show me how those pieces might affect the shape of the vest. When it comes to your model, this also can be customized to fit your measurements. It's especially useful if you'd like to try on some of the larger or smaller sizes to see how they fit certain body types. Each of our models contains about 90 different morphs that enable you to edit that model. It begins with an overall morph, which changes the entire model's body proportionally. And then, of course, you can go on to select in the individual height um, of the model. We also move on to allow you to deal with very specific postures, muscles, arm mass, even the body type. Then you can move on to enter in all your individual lengths and circumferences. Some of our customers enjoy working with different poses if they're planning on, for example, putting this on the internet. So there are a couple of different poses provided, including some simple poses to change his original posture. For this vest, for example, since it's quite full, I might want to lift the arms up a little bit. Once I've created my model, I can create all the different sizes and they will all be stored here within this preset model. Finally, we have some additional accessories such as footwear and for your vest you might want to dress the model in an outfit such as a t-shirt and work pants or even a uniform, police uniform. <clears throat> so now let's move on to how we assembled the pieces onto the model. Well, it's quite simple. I just move in here with my sewing machine. Since it's already been done, I will delete some of these stitches. And to sew in the software, you have a couple of choices. One is you can go from point to point, especially if you're matching notches or something. The second is you can even just make a box. So I can very quickly go around and just point to which seams sew to which seams. When I'm all done that, I can place the pieces around the model and further position them, most particularly if you've changed his posture. So a culmination of the fabric properties that I chose and the stitches that I chose, which also carry a force, such as elastic, or if the tape in this example is probably stuck down and um, overrides everything, I really find it important to be able to put a very stiff stitch constraint on those tape edges. It's really made up of all these tiny little meshes which will dictate exactly how that should appear um, as a physical property, whether it's made out of a 100% cotton or a polyester blend. You want the material to behave that way. So as you can see, it's assembling this garment onto the model. Now at any time, I can also add additional pieces such as these uh, tape reflections. And let's go ahead and unignore them, and they will then appear in the 3D window. I may need to position them further if they uh, don't line up. And then I can just press uh, simulate, so it will continue to put this vest on the model. Once the vest is on the model, I have a collection of tools that allow me to add different colorways. 
So for example, for the vest, I went in and selected a um, mesh material. And then I can go through and enter different types of colorways, whether it's a more orange vest or a yellow vest. In addition, I can also select different colors for my tape. So again, depending on the color of the reflection tape will depend on how it appears within the window. Optitex also has a feature that allows me to add a shininess to that tape. So I can enter in a, uh, different values of shininess. So it will sort of act like real reflection tape. One thing else to note in Optitex is we try to use realistic 3D parts. So in this example, I added a 3D zipper to the model as well as a zipper pull. And you'll notice this is an actual 3D part, again, to add a layer of realism to the design. And that, of course, can be positioned wherever I want it to be. It's quite simple to select that. You simply select on the stitch or the button and then choose from a list of 3D parts that we provide for you, ranging everywhere from rings to snaps to rivets, and in this case, a zipper pull. I also added the different stitch detail around the model. So you'll notice here next to the zipper, there's a stitch detail, and up by the neckline, there's a stitch detail. Finally, we have a collection of tools to allow either the technical designer or designer to make decisions about this design. They'll be able to work with a text tool so they can make different comments around the model for changes or to report back to a pattern maker to make these changes. You can also take different measurements. For example, let's see what the measurement is from the high shoulder point to the turn back. You can also look through the garment to the model and take specific circumference measurements to see the difference between the body and the garment at different locations. Often, I will select on my circumference so that I can see those key points of measure on my model while I'm working. You can also hide the model and then save this as a 3D cloth file. This 3D outfit can be opened outside of Optitex on anyone's computer with a simple viewer. If I would like to take this into a merchandising meeting, we can even take it up a level of realism using a feature we have called High Quality Render. Here we have a collection of shadows, and if you'll notice now, it's a much more intense looking material. And this, of course, can be done with or without the model. Let's go take a look at that file we just saved outside of the software. A free runway viewer available uh, one quick download from our website. Next, I can go to my desktop and I'll select that cloth file I created and I can simply drag it right into the 3D window. And now, without the Optitech software, I'm able to rotate and turn the model and I can even drag and drop different textures onto different parts of the model. I can also take, perhaps without the model showing, some high quality, high resolution images and snapshots. It's quite interesting that you have the ability to take a multiple view snapshot, which automatically takes a front side, uh, front, left, right, and back view of your, of your file. Finally, when you're all done, you have the option to customize your Excel report. If you remember earlier when I talked to you about the style and area report, this might be something key that I would like to see in my full report. So I can go through and check or uncheck fields of interest for me.
even customize the field name. We have multiple fields even for high-end cutting room information. Let's go ahead and run that report so we can see what it looks like. And this, of course, can be imported or added to your PDF report or collection, and in some cases, improve what you're currently working with. So here is the report. You see it tells you the path, the size ranges, the number of pieces. And as you scroll down, you see here you have a complete area and perimeter report. In addition, you have an area and perimeter report complete with the material code, which is quite important because you need to know the total amount of tape area and the total amount of cloth area. We then go on to add specific details about each piece in the file with a little tiny image showing you the shape of the piece. So in conclusion, this is the PDF software. As a reminder, you can design any type of patterns within this software or even work to create a brand new style based on this block. An ideal situation would be to have fully graded basic patterns from shirts to vests to jackets or any of the garments that you're going to use. Fully graded, then the next time you come up with a new design, you simply have to go into your measurement charts and you can actually type in what your new dimensions are. And again, these can be based on the ones you currently use. This gives you a lot more ownership and freedom of the designs that you're making. So thank you for your interest in Optitex, and if you have any questions, please feel, feel, feel free to visit our website, optitex.com, for more information.